Hi, my name is Claire and I'm a TA for the GEP. Today, I will be walking you through how to use the sequence updater. So not all assemblies are perfect and we might need to correct them. Before we look to correct an assembly, we need to exhaust all other lines of reasoning before we update the sequence. There may be a novel isoform in your species or an absent isoform, some other non-canonicity, a misalignment or a sequence divergence. However, if you go through these lines of reasoning and you still think that there is a consensus sequence error, then you would use the sequence updater. What the sequence updater does is it allows students to create a variant call format or VCF that can aid in annotation when a student comes across a consensus sequence error. For our purposes, the sequence updater is used in conjunction with the gene model checker. So to navigate to the sequence updater, we will go to thegep.org, go under the projects tab and pathways. Then we get to our resources over here. The second to last resource is the sequence updater. So we can click that. For this, we will also need to go to the genome browser. So I opened both of those two tabs. So the links for those will both be in the description of this video as well. So I'm going to show you today how to use a sequence updater using a consensus error that I made up in the species Drosophila sicilia. So in my genome browser, I will click Desicilia, select the assembly that I want, which is the only assembly that I have, and I will type in ALK because that's what I want to look at. So to find out what your actual error would be, you will need to find local alignments within multiple assemblies of that particular region to confirm what the error is. So to put that in an analogy, say you're someone who has never eaten pizza before and you see someone eating a slice of pizza and they're eating it crust first. If you've never seen anyone eat pizza before, that you don't know whether that's correct or not. So in order to confirm whether or not that is the normal way to eat pizza, you might go to say a pizza shop where you see 20 other people eating pizza and you notice that they're all eating it not from the crust, <laughs> from the normal way. So you would then understand that, okay, the person eating from the crust first was the anomaly and the odd one out. So similarly, you find multiple assemblies in this one region and you can check which sequence is the anomaly. So I hope that was a little bit more helpful to understand. So if you come across something like this and you do believe that you have an error, please reach out to one of the TAs and we can help you with that. Also, please reach out to your faculty member and let them know that you think you might have a consensus error. So back to this annotation. Um, so as I said, I'm going to be using the ALK gene in Drosophila sicilia, so I navigated there. And now I will show you what the sequence updater looks like. So this is the first page. Select the species name. I will click the drop down and choose Drosophila sicilia. The genome assembly, again, there's only one. To get the scaffold name, I will navigate back to the genome browser. And there are several places where I can look for my scaffold name. One is up here with my coordinates. Another is right here. And the last place is underneath the scale bar. So I know that my scaffold is super underscore one. So I will write that in there. I will click select and it will bring me to the next page. So now it's asking me to specify what the sequence changes are in this scaffold that I want to change. So now I will go back to the genome browser to look for those. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the entire gene. I see that the ALK gene contains eight exons and the region that I'm going to use today for the purposes of the sequence updater video is at the end of exon six. And I'm going to change my base position to full and just zoom in a little bit further. Great. 
great. So the final three bases of this exon six here are A, T, A. So this is where I want to begin updating my sequence. So I'm going to navigate back to the sequence updater and I will first show you a change of base. So in the start position, that's going to indicate where I wanna start changing my bases. So if I navigate back to the genome browser, I can determine that what I have is the last three bases are these three again, and the first base is 10,016,172. So when I type in my start position over here on the right, it'll show me what the sequence is at that particular place. So I can confirm on my sequence updater that I have the correct sequence that I'm looking at from over here. So I have ATA starting at the base and that base is again ATA. And it also shows me a range around the position that I'm looking at. So the original sequence I know is ATA. And say that I thought that the sequence should actually be ATG based on other lines of reasoning. So then I would type in my new sequence ATG and click add. So then it comes down here at the bottom, we have our list of sequence changes. So you can add more than one and I will show you how to do that as well. So for the next one, I will show you what an insertion would look like. So back on the genome browser, say I wanted to start at this base right here, 10,016,175, we have a G. I can confirm at 10,016,175, I should have a G. So the original sequence is a G. And say I thought that there were actually supposed to be two Gs there, I would simply type in GG and add that. So that's an example of an insertion. Originally I have one G, now I have two Gs. So the next change that I want to create is a deletion. So say I have a sequence at 10,016,178, that is T and then A. So I'll go here. I can see that my T is highlighted. So my original sequence is TA. And for some reason, I thought that the A was not correct. I would just want to submit a T and I would add that. So Again, the first one, I changed a base ATA to ATG. The second one, I added a base, an insertion. And the third one, I deleted a base, a deletion. So once I submit all of the changes that I think are necessary, I would simply select Apply Changes. And I click on this VCF file, and it downloads. However, your computer needs to download a file. And if I wanted to update another sequence, I would simply select update another sequence and it would bring me back to that first page of the sequence updater. So here's my VCF text file. In this file, it explains a little bit more about the changes that I had just made. So in this row right here, we have chromosome, position, ID, reference, alternative, quality, filter, and info. So the chromosome is my scaffold that I was on. So that's super underscore one. The position tells me the base number. And I had three different base numbers for the three different changes that I wanted to make. Um, the ID is this whole VCF, D, SEC, CAF1 line. The reference is the reference bases. So the ATA, the original sequence that we referred to and the alternative is what I put in as a substitute. So the first one you can see ATA to ATG, that's my change of base. The G to GG, that was my insertion. The TA to T, that was my deletion. So after you download this file, you would wanna save it with a name that you would recognize. And then you would be able to upload this to the gene model checker in order to verify your gene model. So, that is how you use the sequence updater and I hope this was helpful.